Okay, so this, this uh, conversation really got started in earnest uh, 150 years ago when Charles Darwin published his book on the origin of species. And it was really a real, very good idea uh, and impressed a lot of people at the, uh, at the time and, and subsequently. And Darwin, like uh, Steve was talking about, said that, well, suppose that an animal were born with a slightly increased coat of fur and it was a cold winter, then that animal would have a better chance of surviving than others of its species which uh, had shorter fur, or might be more exposed to the elements. And if it survived, and if it uh, produced offspring, then its offspring uh, might inherit the same characteristic. And if the characteristic kept uh, giving an advantage, then over time it would spread throughout the whole population. And it was a very good idea, and it explains many things, and, uh, uh, and it may explain many things about biology, and, and continues to do so. But Darwin knew that although his theory could explain some things, there would be things that it would have trouble with. And in The Origin of Species, uh, he was talking about something called organs of extreme perfection in one section, talking about the eyeball. And at the end of his discussion of, of those really, really complex organs, he said the following. He wrote, if it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed, which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down, adding, but I can find out no such case. In this passage, Darwin was emphasizing that his theory had to be a gradual one. That is, evolution had to proceed in tiny steps over long periods of time with very incremental improvements. He knew that if animals suddenly improved in great leaps with uh, brand new uh, features all at once, then it would look suspiciously as if something other than random processes were involved. And so he always insisted on this idea of gradualism, very, very tiny and very uh, slow, numerous steps. Well, okay, let's take Darwin at his word and ask, well, what sort of an organ or system could not have been formed or surely does not look like it uh, could be formed by numerous successive slight modifications? And one such type of system is one which I call irreducibly complex or has the property of irreducible complexity. Now, irreducible complexity is a, a fancy phrase, but it has a very, very simple meaning. It just means you've got some system or a machine or something which has a number of different components, and the components interact with each other to perform some function that the individual components themselves can't do. Well, that's a bunch of words. Oftentimes, it's easier to uh, grasp a, a concept if you see an illustration. And an illustration of what I mean by this, um, by this term is shown on the next slide. <laughs> and this is a mousetrap. <laughs> I told you it wasn't hard to grasp. <laughs> a mousetrap that you could get at a hardware store, you know, anywhere. Um, and it turns out mousetraps have a number of different parts. Here, I'm going to use my mouse to follow along. <laughs> and it's got this, uh, this wooden platform here to which everything's attached. And it's also got this tightly wound spring uh, with extended ends to press against the wooden platform here. And another extended end hooking over this other metal part called the hammer. And you've got to push the hammer over and it's got to be stabilized in position. And that's the job of something called the holding bar. And the end of the holding bar itself has to be stabilized by being inserted to some, into something called the catch. Now, the mousetrap needs all these parts to work. If it were missing the spring or the hammer or the platform or any of the other parts, you would not have a trap that worked half as well as it used to or a quarter as well as it used to. You would have a broken mousetrap. It would not work at all like this microphone clipping over my ear. <laughs> so this is what I mean by uh, the term irreducible uh, complexity. Uh, so it turns out that 
that things like this are a big headache for Darwin's theory. Because if you wanted to evolve something like a mousetrap by something like a Darwinian process, numerous successive slight modifications, you know, how would you do it? You know, what would you start with? Would you start with, say, the wooden platform and hope to catch mice inefficiently? Yeah. No. No, maybe you'd, you'd trip them or something like that. <laughs> and then maybe you could add another part, maybe the holding bar. And then when they trip, they might impale themselves on, on the holding bar. <laughs> nah, that, that would be silly. Uh, because with irreducibly complex systems, the function only appears when pretty much the whole system is put together. Uh, so in the meantime, natural selection can't select for the function of the system. Uh, and so it couldn't uh, be produced easily in that gradual fashion that Darwin envisioned. Well, mousetraps are very interesting. Um, I think about them a lot. Um, <laughs> but what we really want to know is, are there any irreducibly complex biological systems?